The last idea I want to talk about is connecting the multiplicity of all the x-intercepts with the degree of the polynomial and with this new thing called the number of turning points of the polynomial. In the last video we finished up by looking at problem 28 on page 177. And there we realized, you know, we set this equal to zero to find the x-intercepts and we found that this factor, the x plus 2 squared, when we set that equal to zero and solved, that gave us an x-intercept of x equals minus 2 and this x-intercept had a multiplicity, its exponent in other words, was 2. And then the other factor, x minus 3, when we set that equal to 0 and solved, we got x equals 3, and the exponent on x minus 3, since there's not 1, it's just 1, because anything to the first power is itself. Now, the reason I'm reviewing this is because multiplicity ties into something else we talked about. We also talked about the degree of the polynomial, and that was the highest power of x that occurred, but only when you wrote it out in that very special form. When you, in this case, this isn't in that special form. We would have to distribute x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 3. We'd have to do a lot of foiling or distributing to multiply this all out and get the polynomial in the right form so we could see what the highest power of x actually is. But it turns out there's another way around this. The degree can be the highest power of x, which we can't see right now because we'd have to multiply everything out in order to see what the highest power of x is. It turns out it's also equal to the sum of all the multiplicities of its roots. So in this case, we have multiplicity 2, multiplicity 1, so the degree of this polynomial will be 2 plus 1, or 3. So this will be a degree 3 polynomial. Now, another connection between degrees and x-intercepts is that if you count multiplicities, so if you count minus 2 as being two roots, because in this case it kind of is, if you think about it as x plus 2, not squared, but x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x minus 3, see x minus 2 in some sense occurs, x equals minus 2, is in some sense a root of this polynomial twice. That's what multiplicity is. In, you know, it's a counting how many times is this a root for this polynomial. So a multiplicity of 2 says it's kind of a repeated root. If you count those repetitions, then it turns out that the number of x-intercepts counting multiplicities is always going to be less than or equal to the degree of the polynomial. So here we would have 1, 2, three zeros, or th yeah, three x-intercepts counting this 
x equals minus 2 is 2, and the degree is equal to 3. Now, it may look like, well, of course, that's absolutely obvious. The degree is actually even going to be equal to the number of x-intercepts. But if you look at y equals x squared plus 1, this has a degree of 2, but it's going to have no x-intercepts. So this is kind of a counterexample, a case where you have fewer x-intercepts than the degree of your polynomial. But this relationship will always turn out. And a very similar relationship is dealing with turning points. Turning points, in this case, with this polynomial, this is going to look something like, you know, 28 is going to look something like this. There we go. That's about right. So we have the x-intercept touching but not crossing. And then we have another x-intercept that crosses. This has the right behavior. The degree is odd, so one end will go up and the other end will go down. And I know it's the right end that goes up because this number out here will end up being the leading coefficient, actually. But that's another story. Turning points are aptly named. They're points where, or locations on the graph, where the graph goes from increasing to decreasing, from going up to going down, or going down to going up. So turning points are when the graph turns around and goes back in the opposite direction. For this graph, you know, a rough sketch of this polynomial here, this has two turning points. And it turns out that the maximum number of turning points that you can have, the number of turning points of any polynomial, is less than or equal to the degree of the polynomial minus 1. So in this case, this has the most possible turning points that it can, because the degree of this polynomial is 3. 3 minus 1, this can have the number of turning points of this polynomial has to be less than or equal to 2. And this has 1, 2 turning points. And again, you know, we can have examples where actually a polynomial has fewer turning points than uh, the degree minus 1. In other words, it doesn't have as many turning points as it could have. Uh, those are possible as well. So, another way to write this is to say that the maximum number of turning points is equal to the degree of the polynomial minus 1. That's another way of stating this inequality.